Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty, a Haggerty 10. You know, every day we do the same. And I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW. How are you doing, Sean? Not bad, eh? Yourself? Yeah, very good, very good. Now we always start as well. You see along the bottom, running along with the ticker tape, subscribe to the Celtic Way for a pound a month for the first two months. You'll support top quality journalism. You'll see stuff written by myself and Sean all over the website and various other contributors, videos like this, analysis, stats, everything. If card, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and log on to www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Now, Sean, Celtic Stephen Welsh is one of the nominees for the young the Scottish Football Writers Association Young Player of the Year. Certainly Five is. nominations. I'll run through them. Stephen Welsh from Celtic, Josh Doig from Hibs, Calvin Ramsey from Aberdeen, Ross Graham from Dundee United, and Nathan Patterson from Everton. Now, uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you've had one of it. these things is not like the other there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Indeed. Now, I'll throw it open to you, Sean, because we were speaking off earlier and you were saying did a wee bit of research and homework. Has Stephen Welsh got a chance in amongst those four guys? I think he has actually. I. I mean, it's it's not. You obviously, you know, he's barely played since the winter break. Uh, when I looked at it, it's obviously the Scottish Cup ties against Alloa, which they won two one, and then the Wraith Rovers four 0 Added on to the the kind of wanted to be forgotten Bodo Glunt second leg, which was a two 0 defeat. There is only starts, and he hadn't played in two months when he came on last weekend in that Rangers game, and he obviously came on for that half an hour and played at right back as well, so which that, which is a wee bit unfamiliar yeah. to him. So the perception is maybe well he's not really played he's not he's not played in the last few months he's not made a, a big enough contribution um, to be considered for the award like that but it, before that I mean he started the season really well I thought um, he has and actually and, played hmm? and rates him very highly it does that well he seems to seems to rate him very highly I don't you, I mean get into next season I'm, I I think he probably will still be the backup centre back I don't think yeah. I don't think he'll break through you never know though. Um, and I did make the case earlier in the season when Starfield was struggling uh, that Welsh maybe deserved to have kept his place at the start of that kind of run. Um, yeah. But nonetheless, I mean, he has played a lot of minutes in total this season. And I'm not quite sure what the criteria is because I try to look it up on the, the writer's website and stuff and it doesn't really specify whether they consider everything or it's just domestic football, um, whether they consider European games or whether they consider international games because part of the criteria to be considered is being eligible for the Scotland under 21s. Which is why Leila Bada and all that aren't aren't nominated because mm. uh, that seems to come up every year. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, so I'm not quite sure if I should be considering it. But for instance, I think he started the season well. He's uh, he's. I mean, I've I wrote an article about it. I've mentioned it on here several times, although not for a few months. That um, switch from right centre back to left centre back for the, the kind of which was a big game against AZ Alkmaar earlier in the season. It wasn't just as easy as appeared to do that. At such a young age in a game against a good team, he did have a good start to the season. Now, obviously, the the perception is because he's not played a lot since the the winter break, and particularly because the two centre backs ahead of him are playing so well that maybe he shouldn't get a, an award that, that is for a full season. But then you, you start looking at the other candidates, and apart from Josh mm-hmm. Doig, they've not really played a full season. Ramsey's probably second after that after Josh Doig for that, mm-hmm. but he spent a month and a, a half out injured. Um, so you can make the argument. I, I don't think he'll, he'll be shocked if he doesn't win it, but I don't think you should write him off just because he's not been playing recently for Celtic either, if you know what I mean. Do you believe that Josh Doig could win it for the second year in a row? And if not, Calvin Ramsey, possibly. That's your thoughts, isn't it? I think I think that's probably a, a fair assessment. I, I mean, Doig is probably not reached the level that he, he reached last year in terms of but, um, goals and assists, but then none of the Hibs team have. Um, yeah. they've, they've just they've had a kind of a down season. Um, should be doing better. The underlying stats say they should be doing better, but ultimately they're not. I think uh, he, he you'd imagine he'll probably be, be away in the summer. You would think he's been linked to Celtic before as well, which as a position we'll come on to later on the show. But uh, on top of that, Calvin Ramsey, he was an offensive standout, as in an attacking standout, not just annoying me. <laughs> um, Stand out well in the season despite Aberdeen's shocking form. But again, the underlying stats back up his performances and his potential as well. He got an injury, I alluded to it there, uh, in October that kept him out for about a month. 
but he has been playing regularly again since, although, again, mm-hmm. for a team that's not doing it this season. So that could count for him or against him. Depends how you view it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah of course, but I mean, it's it's just it's pretty heartening to see Stephen Welsh in there being nominated, Sean, despite mm-hmm. the fact, as you've said, that he's not played every game this season. But it just shows you how highly he is rated by his own manager and the perception uh, outside mm-hmm. as well. He's also Scotland under twenty ones captain, isn't he? I mean, he's got that. Yeah. He's got that, and he's locked as well. He's got that feather in his cap. But again, it, it, a lot of it is going to be perception for me. Um, yeah. As I say, like, well, we've not even spoken about the other two candidates yet. But Ross Graham, for instance, he spent the first half of the season on loan at Dunfermline yeah. before getting recalled in January. Yeah. Actually, made his debut against Celtic, seeing that one uh, nil, uh, the Leal Abada one nil at Parkhead yeah, yeah. in January. Um, now, when I looked at him, he kept three clean sheets in a row after that game, and he's played consistently since, but he's not actually played in a game without conceding since February 9th. So mm-hmm. there's also that to consider, but he's, he's also young. He's not ultimately culpable for the, the whole team as well. Uh, yeah. So you can only use clean sheets so much when it comes to these things for defenders, I think. Um, picked up a couple of goals and assists as well, and he's, he's played left-back as well as centre-back. So, again, probably a worthy consideration. Um, but it, it's the perception for me of that might count against Welsh in that he's not played that much in the last four months. Um, I think that might count against him for that. It shouldn't necessarily, because when you look at the minutes, he's he's yeah. played a lot more uh, th- than some of the other candidates. Nathan Partson, you don't need me to get into that. I don't think he's <laughs> barely played at all, never mind enough to be enough for an award. So it's, uh, aye, I, I think you're probably talking one or the other four. Sure, just a couple of comments here. Gary McDowell's had his ready break and he's glowing. Uh, somebody's been subscribing, yeah. are they? Yes, I think he has uh, clearly a reference to a colour piece the other day after Ross County and Dingwall. Now, Sean, it is that time of the season. We're coming to the end of the season and, as you know, the transfer talk starts, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And Celtic this morning have been linked with a player from Hammerby, uh, Monhanad Jassy. I think that's how you pronounce his name. 25-year-old Two million four times capped Iraqi left back. Now he's in the last year he's had eleven assists. He's played forty games and he's created forty one chances, which mm. is decent. But they're saying that he's coming in to possibly uh, go head to head with uh, Greg Taylor for the left back slot. Now I know you're a big fan of Greg Taylor. Uh, do you believe that we need <clears throat> another left back? And as Monhan of Jassy, somebody that you, you've just from what you've looked at, do you think he, he fits that bill to at least come in and provide stiff competition for that? Well, I mean, you don't, you don't know until somebody gets here, do you? But he's uh, he's not, I mean, I think you said 40 odd games there. That it's that's last season's, I think, because he's only played right. 10 games this season. Um, they've only, I mean, it's just started a couple of months ago, so okay. he's uh, he's an Iraqi, but Iraqi, Swedish, yeah. Sweden born, so yeah, Swedish born, yeah, aye, aye, so. Um, 25, 5 foot 10, which I'm, I'm mentioning because a lot of people obviously mention height when it comes to, um, <laughs> yeah, to Taylor. So, uh, when I had a quick look at him, his heat map on Y Scout suggests that he's a line hugging fullback. But to be fair, you could have said the same thing about Taylor before Ange got a hold of him, uh, mm-hmm. moved him in field, and that's paid off. So, you can't necessarily look too much into that. Uh, sure. At a glance, from what I can see, he's got a decent passing accuracy, good crossing accuracy, likes a dribble which you could level the accusation Taylor doesn't really do that part, the dribbling part. Um, he's also good for over four interceptions again, which is which gives you a, a, a kind of flavour of the fact that he's obviously switched on, going back the way as well. This season, from what I read, he's got three assists in, in 10 games for Hammerby, so that's a decent return. Uh, we'll have an in-depth, and I'm not uh, for by that I mean not just saying, oh, this guy looks good, uh, scout report on a website for you, so probably that'll be tomorrow morning because it will be an in-depth one, so keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Um, in general, to answer your question about the, do they need another left back? Well, I think yes. I mean, you know, you know how big a fan you know how big a fan I am, Greg Taylor. Um, I think he's been good this season. I also thought he was good before this season too, though. That's why I was probably in the minority. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's improved again under Postecoglou, though, and that. And there's an article actually on a website um, from last week that Ross Goodman, yeah. who if he's got on Twitter, boys analytics is his, his handle on that. Um, he wrote exploring exactly why that's the case at a dodgy result to go on and read. Because uh, it really does get into just how and why Taylor's kind of actively, you can see that he's, he's improved under Postacoglu uh, this season. But I think they can still afford to get another left back. Um, when we were at that semi final, I think it showed 
when Taylor goes down and Juranovic is also unavailable to to move over there, it's it's not it's slim pickings. Um, yes. So I think there's a, there's also an argument that if they do, if you've got to remember ball and goalie and all that still still on the books technically, and you've got Liam Scales there. Um, but I think there's an argument that if they do sign another left back in the summer, then it's got to be one better than Taylor. And I, I don't mean just better than Taylor, possibly better than Taylor, or at a similar level that could be better. I mean, actively better. Otherwise, yep. what's the point? Yep. The retro Celtic makes a good point. Ange knows this market. Remember when he was asked about untapped markets and he mentioned Iraq, didn't he? I am still not sure if he's been serious. So, um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Him, that he's, he's playing in Sweden, this boy. And yeah. I, I, I don't, I was, I'm still not sure he was in any other. But he did sort of say that, didn't he? So mm. maybe he was kind of, because uh, he did laugh, didn't he? And he said, try to throw people off, off the scent here, kind of thing as well. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, it's an intriguing one, Sean, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's more than anything else. Uh, Alan Robertson, because Ontario's playing well, but I think another one pushing him even more would be great for the team. Nah, I tend to agree with that as well. Nah. You know, but, you know, you've been a champion of Taylor, haven't you, Sean? Mm-hmm. Uh, all season. And to be fair, I think he's came into his own in the last part of the season. And you mentioned yesterday that he's turned up in all the big games so far mm-hmm. this season. I think so. I, I mean, I'm going to put David's comment up here because this is this is one part that it, it does get levelled at my bit. And to be honest, that, that I can't disagree a lot because I think he was... It, well, I mean, you, you know you can be beaten man for man in any game. Um, yeah. But obviously the Bodo Glimp game, he, he came in for a, a little bit of criticism for it. I think he did just come up against a guy who had, had the beating of him on that, that occasion. Um, but there is an argument, I would agree with David, there is an argument that, that they can get a better left back, but also a, a couple of better, a couple of positions where they could get better players for the European challenges that, that lie ahead. Um, what I would say is Taylor's got enough credit in the bank that he's not automatically going to be out the door or anything, I wouldn't think. Uh, yep. And you alluded to it there, and again, I've, everybody will go, oh, you say this every week now, but it, it has turned up in the bigger, certainly the bigger domestic games, which I'm counting as the three three Rangers games that he's played in. Um and the, the Hibs in the League Cup final, which I still think it's underrated, the, the game that he had that day. Um, so I, th- I think he's got enough credit in the bank. Ange likes him. He, he believes in him. Um, he'll play the way that he wants him to play, and he'll do it to a high level, especially domestically. But again, is that to say that they can't get a better left-back? No, they can still get a better left-back. But for me, it's got to be an actively better one. Otherwise, there's no point. Yeah, I mean, that, that and that's all point. And you know, and his thoughts on bringing in a player, he envisages him in that position. Can he play in his team? So if this is a guy that he's previously scouted, then you would trust the manager's judgment on that player coming in, that he will be uh, certainly of a standard, and if not, as you say, better than Taylor. Mm-hmm. I just think that, that's got to be the key. It's not that, It's not going to be last summer, um, yeah. where it's arguably still the incorrect method, but quantity over quantity, quality last summer, it was more about yeah. filling out the squad, it seemed, and Ange kind of referenced how it wasn't really necessarily happy with the, the, the speed of some of the transfers and, and stuff like that. But January, I think that's the template for this summer as well, I think. You'll probably see yeah. more players shipped out in the summer, I would hope, but overall, in terms of first-team contributors, I think there'll be a small number, but it will hopefully be a quality small number that's added the same way as it was in January where they can come in, contribute right away and improve the squad rather than improve the, the, the kind of start my living in a week-to-week basis rather than the way it was last summer where some of them still did really well, some of them had the ground running, but others you've barely seen if seen at all, that kind of thing. So I think yeah. the January template's got to be the one for the summer and that's where it's not for me about they need a left-back, so get another left-back in, it's got to be the right left-back, which I think is Postacoglu's modus operandi anyway. But I think it's important to, to stress that that's the way it's got to be. Don't just get numbers in to fill these positions. You're get confusing. it in where it's going to improve it. So. You're confusing people there, Sean, saying the right left back. <laughs> that's uh, what Juranovic has been playing, uh, isn't it? Right I, know, I, know, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. What other positions would you strengthen in, Sean? I'd still say they need another centre back, possibly another goalkeeper. And uh, I'm, I'm looking at a, a midfield enforcer in, with height. That's that's my my kind the problem, of the problem. The problem with that, the problem with that is, and I said the same in, in in summer, and certainly in January. That the problem, I, I agree in principle that they maybe do need a wee bit more athleticism and physicality in, in the middle. I, I definitely agree, but it's not even in principle. I do agree with, but the trick is 
it's got to be someone who's got the technical quality. I liked it because otherwise yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll be left floundering in the middle. Yeah, of yeah I know that. I get that, and I'm yeah. sure the manager is aware of that, and he's probably picked out potential guys to fill that role. You know, that's. I'm mm-hmm. just. I was thinking off the top of my head what I thought. We need our left backs and a midfield and the force there. I I agree with that. To be fair, I just thought last weekend at Hamden showed that up. Maybe you need a, an enforcer. I think I, I, in a way, to to when it's those kind of games, show when it's a, you know, it's a battle, that mm. kind of thing. Again, though, I I can see where you're coming from, but there was the reasons that that was allowed to descend into that, yeah, and sure. I, I would yeah. again go back to the referee's performance. You you can yeah, I said yeah. this last week. You don't want to go on about the referee because it feels like you're trying to make an excuse, but at the same time, both things can be true. The referee can be shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celtic right, can right. still have played pretty, pretty kind of uh, poorly. Agree with that. Uh, and I think that was the case, but there was also an influence in letting a lot of those physicality, uh, the physical kind of approach go mm-hmm. that then impacts on the way Celtic want to play. Now, you, what you could argue is have a guy that can come on and, and do that kind of role in the same manner and it, it doesn't become an issue. And I, all right, I agree with that, but ultimately... Celtic are going to be wanting to play the football first. Yeah, I, I, I agree and, with that too. And but... I, 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 I almost think it's unfair because when you actually look at the stats and stuff like that, despite the fact that John Lundstrom got man of the match, there was not that much in yeah, the midfield I mean, have, battles. They, they have, just did shade it, obviously, but it was a lot of the physical play. It wasn't necessarily something that you can buy in and hope that they get away with six or seven bookable offences the way that Lundstrom did. So I, I, I do agree in principle they need more athleticism in the midfield. Um, and as for an enforcer, potentially, but as long as it's allied to, to a, a, a really high level of technical quality as well. So Yeah, yeah. I just think we need a bit of height there as well, Sean. You know, mm-hmm. you look at Celtic teams in the past, there's always been a, a good bit of height there. I'm, I'm not thinking particularly on Martin O'Neill's team. There's a lot of big guys in there, you know, and some physicality. Uh, although, as, as they're always, it pains to stress out, they were not hammer throwers. They played really good football. Uh, uh, they were all, but that's what I mean. So you can be a big guy and be a good football player. Of course you can, you, aye. Technically, but, still, so it doesn't necessarily prove that if you're if you're a big guy that you're not a, a ball-playing midfielder or you know, a ball-playing centre-half or, or left-back or whatever. So yeah. I, I'm just saying the... These people exist, and I'm sure the manager will know that, and he'll be that's what he'll be doing. He'll be scouting those kind of guys right now. So there you go. Well, Metro Celtic seems to agree with that kind of uh, theory as well. Now we will build up to uh, uh, Salah McGarry goes in. I agree with Tony Regan height one weakness to allow which opposition to play Vance up before possibly. Yep. Now we will build up to uh, a small matter of the Rangers game on Sunday, Sean. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we mm-hmm. will uh, be picking our eleven. Further down the line, that will be a laugh. Uh, I've absolutely no idea what I'm thinking for that one as of this moment. But lots of Celtic supporters looking forward to that, Sean. We we, we spoke about it briefly yesterday, saying it could all be, be a, a title clincher. Do you get right. excited, Sean, or when does an else kick in for you Tuesday, Wednesday? Or do you, Last you week. We'll come to it. Um, we'll come to it later in the week. But I, it's. Uh, I mean, Alison in a column I mentioned it yesterday says it's almost as close as a pressure-free Glasgow derby as you'll get. I don't think there is such a thing, obviously, but I can kind of see where she's coming from in terms of the the cushion is still there. It's not going to be like the derby was for for Rangers and the and, and the sure. flip side on in February where it was Celtic one and that's that's the kind of it's tangibly made a difference at the top. So I can see where she, she's coming from. I don't agree. I think there is no such thing. Uh, but I can see the point. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. And uh, a lot lots of Celtic supporters looking forward to it now and I, and I noticed yesterday that the the Hearts game and the Motherwell games are now sell out, Sean. I, I expected that, expected didn't we? It, yeah. um, I wouldn't yeah, say it was probably. a news flash, but aye. Yeah. But uh, just kind of people getting in there. I'm, I'm hesitant to say title party mode, aren't they? They're, Ooh. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> well, they're, they're cranking it up, aren't they? And the thoughts when you see in social media. But as we've spread all along, Sean, it's one game at a time. The next game being Rangers and if Celtic win, they can put themselves in a, a wonderful position for, yep. for the three remaining game of the season when we will as i say ramp that up wednesday thursday friday uh, another enjoyable briefing today hopefully stephen welsh gets a nod and wins the young player of the year fingers crossed on that again do the the housework if 
hit that subscribe button, guys. Subscribe to the Celtic Way for a pound for two months. Chance to win a hundred pound gift card. You can see the videos and all the stats and analysis and all the opinion pieces from various columnists. Just hit the subscribe button and you log on to www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. First class as always, contribution, Sean. Thanks for the comment, guys. We'll always try and read as many as we can. Uh, we appreciate it. The build-up continues. It might be a slow week, but have a good Tuesday if you can. Cheers, Tony. Thanks, Cheers, guys.